Hey guys, welcome back again to another Great Commission Alliance Media Channel Bible Bite. My name is Chris and today we're going to look at what we can do when we face times of despair in our life. Now this is something that's very relevant in my life and I think for many of us, if we're honest, we're probably all facing similar uh, times, especially now in the people I've talked to. I know many um, have shared that uh, they're probably in the hardest times that they've gone through in their life have been recent. You know, we have everything going on with the pandemic, the political climate with the world, and the changes that are happening there. Um, not to mention all the other factors that are happening that we're going through in life. And it can just be very overwhelming. And there's times when we just feel completely in despair, that we can't take any more, that we are probably at our breaking point. And so the question is, what do we do when we face those moments? Well, stay tuned, and we're going to talk more about that. So today, our focus is going to be in Psalm 6. And this is a psalm that is written by David. And uh, here we're going to see David is going through something very similar in his life. And we're going to see how it changes from the very beginning of the psalm from despair to, at the end, hope and confidence. So I'm going to start with verses 1 through 3. And it says, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? So the first thing that we can take from this, the first thing that we see David doing is this, is that we need to make our plea to God. We need to express the need that we have to him. You know, we see David does this. And, and this is something that David does very well. In fact, this is, this is kind of why David is um, referred to as a man after God's own heart. I mean, that's, that's quite the title to have. And what is unique and, and special about David? Well, we know he's not perfect. We get that from the scriptures very well. Um, it tells us uh, about a lot of the sins that David has committed. Um, but the one thing that's unique about David is that he always turns back to God. You know, when things are, are bad, when, when, when he's um, crying out to God, when he's in deep despair, you know, he shares that. He, you know, we see that in many of the Psalms that are written by David, where he's crying out, where he's in distress. You know, when God delivers, when God provides, uh, he's n never short to give God thanksgiving, give God the glory and the credit. So it's in the bad times and it's in the good times, it's in the in-between. He's constantly... You know, there's psalms constantly about just praises and admiration and acknowledgement of God and who He is and, and that He's to be worshipped and loved based on who He is, not for what He does for us. And so, whatever the case, David always points things back to God. And so that's the first thing that we need to do when we're facing moments of despair is we need to come to God with it. And this isn't always necessarily an easy step. It, it sounds easy. But I know when I'm in these times, when things are hard, when, when the walls seem to be closing in and I seem to be getting deeper and deeper, sometimes the hardest thing for me to do is just come to God with it. Sometimes I'm holding it in and maybe um, many times it's out of pride. It's out of, I don't want to bother him. I, I can do this on my own. And that's the biggest mistake that we make. And a lot of times it gets us deeper uh, in uh, more and more trouble than where we started. So what we see here in the first three verses is David is dealing with quite a bit. He says, um, be gracious to me, God, for I am languishing. So we know um, languishing is kind of a, a term and can also mean I'm in this deep, depressed state. Um, I'm in deep grief. And so we know there's something mental or emotional um, struggle that David's going through. We also know that there's something physical that's David struggling with right now. It says, heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. So even his bones, he's talking about, are, are, are in trouble. And then also we know it's, it, there's a spiritual, 
there's a spiritual struggle or, or spiritual battle that he's dealing with as he's like, my, my soul also is greatly troubled. So here we see David facing physically, emotionally, spiritually drained. And this is a lot of times where we can get when we face uh, trouble and, and things seem to continue piling on. It just seems like we're just drained. And it seems like one uh, aspect, maybe it's something emotionally or physically, but how that can draw into also the physical or the spiritual or the emotional. And so we see... Um, Ultimately, David is crying out to God, God, I need you. How long? And so the second thing that we can take from this is that we need to acknowledge God and his sovereignty. So let's look here at verse four. It says, turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. So, God, so he, he's reaching out uh, to the Lord and he's asking him, to turn to him, to help him, to save him, to be his deliverer. Um, he knows, he's acknowledging that this he cannot get himself out of this. He's acknowledging that God is in control, that only God can be his deliverer. You know, we need to acknowledge God as that. We need to, to acknowledge that he alone is the only one that can fill the need and, and, and the emptiness that we, we, we are having. And I love what he says. He says, save me for the sake of your steadfast love. So here, you know, David isn't saying, save me because of how faithful I've been to you, because all the obedience and, and all the things I've done for you or what a good person I am. No, he knows that has nothing to do with it. But David's acknowledging that, that God, only God can save us because of God, because of him, not because of us. It has nothing to do with what we do, but it's all based on him and his love and his everlasting love. That doesn't end in his, his uh, overwhelming grace that he provides for us. And so we need to come to God um, that same way, acknowledging that, like, I'm not worthy of, of uh, I'm not worthy of you or worthy of, of you to deliver me, but, but God, I know you do because you love me. You know, it's because of you. Um, so the first thing, again, is, is our plea to God and expressing our need. Um, the second is to acknowledge God and his sovereignty and that he is the only one that can deliver us from this. The third is to just being transparent and vulnerable. We see this here in verses six through seven, where David goes into deep detail. He says, I'm weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because all of my foes. Have we ever been in a situation where you felt like that? Where you're just in deep sorrow, deep grief. And uh, it just seems like the walls are closing in on you. And it's this funk you just cannot seem to get out. Well, here David is, is being very transparent and open. As we read this, you know, if I didn't know David, I'd think, wow, it's, man, this guy's a mess, you know crying all over the place like what kind of man is this but here's the fact David we know is a man's man David's a warrior David is the one who as a, as a young man fought Goliath the one that had all the, the best of the best of the army trembling to their knees and he went up and faced him um, with a rock and a piece of leather we know David's the one that's that slayed over 200 Philistines you know for King Saul in order to win his, his daughter's hand in marriage. And we know David is the one who led victoriously battle after battle for the Israelites. So David's a man's man, David's a warrior, but David is not afraid to be vulnerable, to share his emotions, to share um, where he's at. And that is ultimately how we draw intimacy. And that, that's what God wants with us. You know, God wants um, us not just to worship him, he wants a relationship with us. He wants us to be transparent with him to come to him with everything that's going on in our life and not hold back. And so that's the next thing that we need to do is be transparent and vulnerable. And just like in a marriage, we open up with our spouse and we share things with them that we probably wouldn't share with the rest of the world. Well, we need to do that with God too. We need him to know us intimately because he already knows. So we need to continue to go with God and, and, and just tell him exactly where we're at. And then finally, the last thing that we see David do is 
he has confidence in God's deliverance. So we look here, starting in verse 8, it says, Depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. So I'm sure as, as David's writing this psalm, that at that time, I'm sure his circumstance might not have changed yet. I'm sure he's still struggling, but see, David knew that God uh, was capable of delivering him. David knew uh, that he could trust his results to God. And David acknowledges that even in, in the midst of his struggle and his suffering, he knows that he's come to God with an open heart. He's been transparent. He's given his plea to him. He's acknowledged him as, as Lord and Savior and sovereign and his sovereignty and his control. And he knows that God has his best interests in mind. And so God is going to be delivering him. God will answer this prayer. And so David is, is already, by the end of this psalm, has already have this despair turned to confidence and hope in, in God. And we too can do the same. And we can trust those results to God. And, and you know what? God doesn't always answer the prayers in the way that we expect him to. You know, that's what it means by, by just trusting in him and, and living by faith, is that it's not always the circumstances around us, but we can trust that God, when we're coming to him with an open heart, um, you know, when we're truly seeking him and his guidance, that he will do what is the best for us. And that might not look of what we think it is, but ultimately we can trust him with that. So guys, I hope this brings some encouragement and hope to you as we all are facing difficult times and we're all facing times of despair, we can trust that we have a God who really loves us, who wants to know us, who wants to be our savior, who wants a deep relationship with us. And ultimately he wants us to go to him. He wants to be our shelter. So thank you so much for joining us. I hope this is encouraging. Take care and I hope to see you again.